Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good day to our lecturer, Professor Madia Dr. Abel Manaf Buhari and our fellow classmates. I am Nazira Salahuddin, metric number 264000. I am the leader for Group 6, The Girls, and we will be presenting about our strategic audit report focusing on CIMB Group Holdings per Hut. Let me begin with the introduction for the presentation first. As I have mentioned before, we have chosen to analyze about CIMB Group Holdings per Hut, which is the second largest commercial bank in Malaysia. To produce the strategic audit report for this organization, we have identified several internal issues that CIMB is currently facing. Then, we analyze its internal forces to identify its strengths and weaknesses in the industry, using the sources which are the Annual Report, Financial Report and the Sustainability Report for Financial Year 2020 that have been published by CIMB in its official website. As for the external forces analysis where we identify the opportunities and threats waiting for CIMB in the industry, we have used two methods which are the steep analysis and Porter's five forces analysis. Last but not least, to produce the recommendations that we think are useful for CIMB to improve its strategy and overcome the internal issues that it is facing, we have used the strategic tool known as the SWOT and TOS matrix analysis. Moving on, let me continue with the internal issues that CIMB face. The first one is the decrease in net profit due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As the deadly virus has affected a lot of people, more nations are compelled to go into lockdowns in order to curb down the total infection rates. Malaysia is not exempted from this as it has implemented its own Movement Control Order or MCO since 18th March 2020. It resulted in economic slowdown because businesses, organizations and uh, learning institutions, apart from the essential services, are forced to shut down either temporarily or permanently. It resulted in people to lose their source of income as many of them are faced with salary reduction and more are terminated permanently because their employer could no longer pay their salary. The economic slowdown has impacted CIMB financially, especially because Malaysian government have implemented the automatic moratorium on all loan repayments, allowing for the borrowers to defer their loan repayment until a certain date, except for credit cards. This resulted in CIMB's profit to drop from 2.7 million in 2019 to only 1.5 million in 2020. It also led to the lowest dividend payment per share that CIMB has issued in the uh, period of five years. Uh, because in 2020, CIMB can only pay 4.8 cent per share compared to 20 to 26 cent per share in the previous four years. Secondly, there are allegations about possible consumer data breach in CIMB's website and its mobile application. Consumers have been reporting cases where unknown charges have been made to their bank accounts under the label of direct debit without any further explanation. This has made them feel unsafe and felt that their data may have been breached and jeopardized. Besides that, some users also reported cases where under charges have been made to PayPal accounts despite them not having any PayPal accounts at all. One user even reported that they have lost a total of 4,000 ringgit after 28 unauthorized transactions have been made to an unknown PayPal account. For the next point, I will pass on to my fellow presenter, No Khairia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Khairia binti Kyrudin and my address number 263799. So, uh, thank you my friend. So, I will continue with the other internal issue that is faced by the company which is the conflict in the management policy and the procedure. As we know that CIMB is a customer center banking group that wants to create and fulfill the wants and needs by creating loyalty and pleasant banking experience. So, the company has to put the major emphasis on the good services provided to the customer while building the long-term relationship with them. However, some of the branches are found to have poor uh, service management based on the complaint received by the customer who are dissatisfied towards some of the CIMB branches. Moreover, there are customers who are not satisfied with the services of the CIMB employee as they do not know the needs and the problem faced the, uh, by the customer. Other than that, the self-service machine in some of the CIMB branches are always out of service or in the maintenance causing more inconvenience to the customer. This is the management issue that occurs in the internal issue in the company. So um, next, I will pass to the next presenter to continue in explaining the issue in the internal uh, topic. Assalamualaikum and good morning. My name is Dumai Sarah Binti Ruslan. My metric number is 263782. Now, I will continue the presentations with the statements in CIMB Bank. The first one is actually the visions. In CIMB, the vision is they want to be the leading focus Asian bank. So here is the first component, which is leading. This indicates of the positions where CIMB actually aim to target and achieve to become the top quartal bank in Asians for the return of equity. Second is focus, where this illustrates that CIMB aim is to target the dominance and key segment 
instead of only become a general image that could be easily dissolved in consumer eyes. And the last part is actually the Asian bank, where the consumer can actually easy to use the CIMB bank service whenever they heard the word Asians. We will go into the mission of CIMB bank now. So, the mission of CIMB bank is they want to provide the universal banking service as the high and performance institute which integrate company and it locate in Asians also the key market beyond also want to become a champions in accelerations of Asians integrations and the region being of the rest of the world. Now we will look into the strategic themes in CIMB Bank. This section have five input. The first one is deliver a sustainable financial returns where CIMB did reshape back their portfolio and also focus on investments. We can see on their annual report the consumer group sections where it show a pre provision operating growth for 6.5% and also reduce the operating expenses for 4.6%. The second one is about discipline executions. So they have objective which is focused and also clear. CMB did practice a good governance with the performance culture and have an effective management structure. The third one is about customer centricity. So CMB approached the customer by customer first based processes. As pandemic is going on, they make sure all the customer get access to the banking service to manage their financial. And the fourth one is to transfer the fundamentals where this is to increase the operation efficiency for CIMB growth. So there is a section for risk management which to have an internal control so that the system in CIMB is effective. And the last but not least is the driven organization purpose. So this have embedded a positive culture in CIMB. They have practiced an open engagement and also a good teamwork in their share value. For the financial analysis of CIMB's financial performance in year 2020, I will be summarizing in two ratios which are the solvency ratios and the market value. For debt to assets ratio, it measures how much assets in CIMB are funded using debts. Compared to previous uh, year 2019, the debt to assets increased by 0.01% to 0.36% in 2020. So the increment is very low and therefore it is a favorable rate and it indicates that CIMB still has a strong financial despite struggling in the COVID-19 previously. As for debt to capital, it measures how much the company is using debt to fund its uh, operation expenses of its projects. However, similar to debt to assets, in CIMB, there is only 0.01 increment uh, from 2019 to 2020, where it only stands at 0.36% in 2020. So it is a very low increment and it indicates that there are no substantial, no significant rise of debts to fund the projects in CIMB. However, it is likely uh, related to the fact that CIMB has implemented the working from home to adapt to the new norm of COVID-19 and therefore there are not much uh, expenses incurred in the offices of CIMB branches. Last but not least is debt to equity ratios. This is used to measure the degree of how much the debt and the equity in CIMB can be used to finance its assets. Compared to the previous two ratios before, this one has a slightly higher increment by 0.03% compared to the previous year 2019 where in 2020 it stood at 0.57%. Uh, however, this, despite being slightly high, it still indicates that uh, CIMB still have high ability to generate cash to fulfill its short-term obligations. Next, we will be talking about the market value ratios. The ratio is used to evaluate the current share price of stocks that have been issued by a public company. The percentage value of this ratio will determine if the share price is underpriced or if it is uh, overpriced. There are two calculations that have been done here for the market value ratios. The first one is the dividend yield, which uh, calculates how much dividend would the company pay its shareholders for the year. Compared to the previous year 2019, the dividend yield was actually high at 5.05%. However, because of the coronavirus pandemic, in 2020, the dividend yield has fallen sharply to 1.11%. So it resulted in the dividend being paid out to the shareholders to be only 0.48 cent per share compared to the previous years uh, where the shareholders would be paid between 20 to 26 cents uh, per share. The second ratio for market value ratio is the price earnings. This ratio compares the price of shares to its earnings per share and the, the percentage that we get from it will reflect the investor's demand for the price of a company and it will also uh, reflect the degree of willingness of the investors to pay for a higher price for the shares as they are anticipating the future growth of the company. For price earnings ratio of CIMB, it has quite a high increment compared to the previous year in 2019, where it increased by 0.11% to stand at 0.36% in 2020. So the increment is not that high, so it is not quite significant. However, it still shows that 
more investors are actually showing anticipation of the growth of CIMB in the future. So it highly uh, indicates that they are expecting CIMB to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. And that marks the end for the internal forces analysis of CIMB. We will now move on to the external forces starting with the steep analysis. Hi and Assalamualaikum to doctor and my fellow friends. My name is Nina Azira bint Ali Mukhtar and my metric number is 263886. So I will continue for the next part for our uh, presentation of strategic audit report, the group organization structure for CIMB Barahat for the year 2020. So basically there are three levels of management in CIMB. The first one is board of directors. So uh, and the second one or the middle level in CIMB is the group CEO and the last level is the group management. So uh, under board of directors, it consists of uh, three categories. Uh, the first one is board committees. Board committees uh, is consists of uh, eight directors, which has been explained by my friends uh, in the previous slide. And then the second one under board of directors is group risk, uh, which is led by David Richard Thomas. And the last one is group legal and compliance, uh, which, it, which is led by Kwon Kin Yu. And then in the uh, middle level of management in CIMB, we, under group CEO, we have country heads. Here we have uh, four countries uh, uh, where Dato Abdul Rahman will manage for Malaysia branch and then uh, Paul Wong Chikin for Thailand branch. Uh, the third one, Tigor M. Siahan for Indonesia. And the last one is Victor Limeng Tech for Singapore. And under Group CEO, we also have Group Company Secretary, which is led by Datin Rosaya. And the third one is Group Strategy and Group CEO's Office, uh, which is uh, still vacant at the moment and is going to be advised soon. And the last one under Group CEO is Group Sustainability, uh, led by Rafi Hanif. So the last level of management is Group Management. Group Management in CIMB, as you, as you can see here, we have 10 Group uh, Management, uh, which is divided uh, according to its... Uh, function. So we have group wholesale banking, group consumer banking, group commercial banking, group transaction banking, group Islamic banking, group digital asset, group finance, group human resource, group technology data, and the last one is group branding and communication. So based on this organization structure, I can say that uh, CIMB is using team-based technique. Uh, as you can see here, Rafi Hanef, who is uh, responsible for group sustainability, is also uh, responsible for group transaction banking under group management. And besides, uh, for group country heads, which is uh, Singapore, led by Victor Limentek, but he is also the one who managing for the group management for group commercial banking. There are many types of organizational structure that can be used by organization. Uh, but for CIMB, as I have explained before, uh, there are currently used team-based technique. Uh, this is because team-based technique, there are many advantages that the organization can get. The first one is, by using this technique, uh, the, the organization is more comprehensive in financial services. And it enables them to enhance their efficiencies performance and also their transparency when they are rendering the, their services to other to clients or customer. Secondly, uh, by using this kind of techniques, it gives a more flexible and empowered workforce because uh, they can shift employees from one team to another team to increase their strength and talents, uh, which at the same time, it will keep them feeling excited doing the new task. And the last advantage that uh, organ organization may get when they are using this technique is uh, this type of uh, structure will lessen the hierarchy and, or, and also the versatility which reinforces the, com the employees to sharpen their critical thinking when solving problems or making decisions and also uh, Therefore, uh, it will speed up their responsiveness because uh, employees can share information with each other more quickly. So as we know, uh, effective communication is very crucial in managing operations as there are uh, 
operating in banking services. So by using this kind of technique, it will train them to be more productive and more efficient in providing service to other people. Uh, for this part, I will explain about the step analysis. As we know that the step analysis uh, has different type of category, which are sociocultural, technology, economical, uh, environmental, and political that can be related with the CIMB. These are external environment that could affect the performance of the company. The top uh, management of a company must analyze all the environment to identify the forces that could serve such as uh, opportunity or treats to a company. So for this slide, I will explain about the social culture which they have the unequal income distribution, healthcare. After the social culture presentations, now I will continue the presentations with CIMB technology. The first one is actually Industrial Revolution 4.0, which commonly being called as IR 4.0. So this technology will boost the effectiveness and efficiency and profitability and quality of products and CIMB service. Next is MITI has launched the National Policy on Industry 4.0 in 2018 to enhance the digital transformations in local manufacturing sector, especially in small medium enterprise. Thus, this opens opportunity for banks to develop on programs and initiatives to help the SME to get their funds for their IR 4.0 efforts. The SME successful digitalizations will give a great return of bank investments. Next is about the digital banking. So this digital banking is referred to the combinations of the mobile banking and also the online banking as one. So it is as one of the new services that have been developed from IR 4.0. So the digital banking lets the customer to assess the online banking service in the bank websites which only use their application in their mobile device. The customer also can assess the online banking service using these applications. This is because assessing the accounts in mobile banking is more convenient. Thus, they can only use the CIMB bank click on their Okay, now I will uh, continue for the external factor for steep analysis, uh, which is the economy. So since the outbreak of uh, pandemic COVID-19, uh, global economic had been uh, badly impacted uh, as people cannot go out as usual because uh, government had imposed the MCO to reduce the infectious. So uh, this gives uh, several impact to the economy. So the first one is high unemployment rate. In 2020, unemployment rate has increased from 3.32% uh, to 4.7%, which is considered high. So uh, it has reduced the customer purchasing power. And at the same time, uh, people unable to repay their commitment uh, that they have such as loan uh, or insurance to the bank. Therefore, this situation has uh, harmed the bank's ability to get funds from customer, which is uh, simultaneously it will uh, affect the net profit of the company. Secondly, the impact that we can see is a uh, decrease in GDP rate. So Department of Statistics Malaysia had reported uh, in 2020 that uh, Malaysian, economy, uh, Malaysian economic GDP has uh, decreased 5.6% if compared from growth in previous year at 4.4%. Uh, so this is uh, mainly due to the uh, restriction of economic uh, activities due to MCO. So all five main production sectors in Malaysia uh, had decreased, uh, including the services in banking. And the last impact that we can see in economy is the changes in its monetary policy. So Bank Negara Malaysia has set a new OPR, uh, which is 1.7%, uh, which is decreased 0.25% uh, from previous OPR. So due to this uh, issue, CIMB had to adjust the lending base rate and also the best financing rate. So at the end, uh, it will impact the CIMB to get lower return on equities uh, due to lower net profit. Ibrahim, Assalamualaikum and my name is Akilah Merdeh Binti Amran with the metric number 264061. So today I would like to present about the environmental part. So the first one is high deflation rate. So according to the Global Forest Watch, the world lost around 12 million hectares of tropical tree covered in 2018 which is equivalent to 30 football fields in one minute. In that event, Malaysia was ranked six among 10 tropical countries that has lost a substantial part of its primary forest. Over 193 hectares uh, of Malaysian natural forests were gone due to deforestation. Between 2001 and 2019, Sabah and Sarawak were counted as top two regions that lost 56% uh, of tree cover. The loss is equivalent to emission of 3.55 gigaton carbon dioxide, adding to more pollution and accelerating global warming. This, the concern over the climate issues motivate the effort towards greener and sustainable operation among corporates and business. 
BNM itself started Go Green initiative to recycle near to recycle new RM1 and RM5 banknotes during IDV3 and Chinese New Year. It is to reduce the printing of new money that would consume enough energy to of power 7,500 Malaysian homes for a month. The effort is well received by members of public. So BNM also urged the financial sector to be more proactive in providing funding for green and sustainability related projects to support the combat against climate change. Thank you my fellow presenters for the previous points. Next, I will conclude the presentation for steep analysis with the political aspects. I will first begin by talking about the political uncertainty in Malaysia. Malaysia originally has always been known as a stable economy in the ASEAN region. However, this uncertainty happened due to the sudden change of government from the former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir to the current Prime Minister Datuk Mujidin Yassin. The talk of the government change have long been speculated. However, with the political turmoil really happened and expected to be prolonged, it is putting more strain on the economy of Malaysia, which is already weak even before the COVID-19 pandemic began. It is also making the foreign investors to lose their confidence in this country, because the sudden change of government may come with the sudden change of policies in the future. And this may affect the new investment plans by these investors, as they are afraid that their investments may not be as profitable as they want. So there have been several uh, multinational companies that have withdrawn their investments from Malaysia and chose to relocate somewhere else. And this has caused a threat to the uh, country because it is losing the foreign direct investments that it could get from uh, very high potential investors. We continue with the automatic moratorium implementation. This is a measure taken by the Malaysian government through its central bank to help alleviate the financial burden of all individuals and businesses that have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, they initially, they were given six months moratorium on all bank loans except for credit cards and they are able to defer the loan repayments until after they have rescheduled and restructured their financial strategies and are able to meet their monthly commitments to the banks again. This, are, this is a good news for all the people that have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and have lost their source of income. However, it affected the banking sectors instead, especially CIMB as a bank, because not only they are not able to get the money, uh, the money back as well as the interest from the loans, they all they are also faced with the risk of not being able to give out loans in the future due to the insufficient cash. I will also talk about the economic stimulus package. As we all know, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the economic activities in this country have slowed down by a lot. So this economic stimulus package is financial aid given by the government to the people in order to help them recover at least a portion of their loss of incomes and encourage them to increase their spending in order to help stimulate the economic activities again. It also includes ta tax reliefs and tax provisions to business sectors in order to help them uh, rebuild and restructure their uh, strategies again, as well as help relieve a part of their financial burdens. Next, we will move on to the Five Forces Analysis. So, Five Forces Analysis is a framework that being developed by Michael E. Potter for companies to use it in analyze the competitive environments. So, the result of this analysis can be utilized by the companies to actually enhance their competitive advantage against all the competitors and can strengthen their profit in company. First and foremost is actually about the competitions in industry. So when there is a large number of competitors with a lot of offerings in equivalent products and service, there is actually a lesser power of a company in those industries. As we can see, in Malaysia, the banking sector is composed by 27 commercial banks which made up of 19 licensed foreign banks. So the industry also has 11 investment banks and 18 Islamic banks and other actually non-financial banking institutions. Among all the competitors in banking industry, is Bank Islam, M Bank, Maybank, RHB Bank, Bank Simpanan Nationals, Bank Rakyat, and also others that list among competitors in CIMB Bank list. So CIMB Bank main competitor is Maybank. So the vast asset of this bank is 640.3 billion, which is compared to CIMB Bank, which is 414.2 billion. The close competitor is Bank Islam. So the reputation of Bank Islam is the first Islamic bank that been established in Malaysia, give a stronger foothold in the industry. Thus, in CIMB also, they have the Islamic sections for Muslim people. As for threats of new entrants, Malaysia has relatively high barriers of entry for a new commercial bank from outside to enter the country. This is because the Central Bank of Malaysia has a very strict set of rules that must be followed by them in order to qualify to get a license to operate in Malaysia. 
For example, the new commercial bank must be able to reserve at least 300,000 ringgit of capital funds un unimpaired by losses. This threshold might, uh, might be lower than Singapore's threshold of 1.5 billion uh, Singapore dollar, but because of this limited number of licenses that will be granted by uh, Central Bank of Malaysia, which is only up to two or three licenses at a time, uh, the competition would be very high for a qualified candidate from outside to enter the country. So overall, the threats of new bank, uh, commercial bank entrance is very low. So CIMB will not be facing any uh, threats to its position as the second largest commercial bank in Malaysia. However, the same low degree of threats cannot be said about the digital banks which are increasingly popular nowadays, especially because the Central Bank of Malaysia is actively encouraging for the digital banks to set up their business in the country. Uh, this is done through offering to issue up to five licenses to the most qualified digital banks, which is not only attractive to the local players, but also to the digital bank companies from outside. Now, the emergence of the digital bank poses threats to the traditional commercial banks, especially if they are slow in innovating their technological systems. This is because digital banks have a more user-friendly interface, they are not bound by the brick and mortar facilities, can be accessed anytime and anywhere by the consumers, and also provide a wider range of services, and therefore they could attract the customers more, especially by uh, especially the younger generations, which are very active in using their uh, technology and their mobile gadgets and phones. So the traditional commercial banks are facing risk of losing their current customers to the rising digital banks. Uh, so next, I will proceed on the bargaining power in supplier. As we know that the degree uh, of the supplier bargaining power depends on the size of the supplier. The larger the number of supplier relative to the buyers, their bargaining power is uh, weaker. To relate in banking sector, it mainly has uh, two supplier. First are the depositors who are customer that supply the main resources of the capital for the bank through uh, their saving and investment in the bank. The second supplier is the employee that supply labor workforce in the bank. In this context, the bargaining power of the supplier to the CIMB is considered as low for it is uh, reliant on the status of the supplier. So this is because a single depositor only carries minimum treats and could not press the IMB into paying higher uh, return of investment to them. As CIMB as uh, 60 million customer as it depositor, losing a few depositors from a normal background will not change the operation of the CIMB. CIMB should try to satisfy their demand to avoid losing the customer investment portfolio, which may uh, affect the source of the capital for the bank. Therefore, the CIMB must offer a lucrative income and benefit to retain the best employee. Okay, next I will continue for uh, five process analysis for bargaining power of buyers. So CIMB shows high bargaining power of buyers because uh, there are many competitors in banking industry. So uh, for example, we can see that uh, there is huge gap between uh, Maybank and CIMB. So Maybank has a lot of customer and also branches if compared to CIMB, uh, even though CIMB is the second largest banking group in Malaysia. Therefore, uh, people tend to choose uh, Maybank due to several reasons. Uh, so, to be same as Maybank, they have to make uh, new changes or improvement, uh, such as uh, reducing the fees charge uh, in order to attract more customer to use their services. Let's move on to the trades of substitute products. In banking sector, similar to the bargaining power of customer, the trade of substitute product is high because there are many other banks options that the customer can choose. Added with the modern technology, they could easily compare the cost and benefits offered by CIMB and its competitors. If the cost of using the competitors' products are lower than CIMB uh, or pro produce great returns, the customer could easily switch into a subscription from CIMB's service to other banks. The product offerings of CIMB are also quite similar to other banks, with, with some of it could be inferior to competitors such as Bank Islam and Maybank. Therefore, it could not be unique enough to compel the customers to retain the loyalty uh, to CIMB. Okay, now let's move to the SWOT analysis for CIMB Berhad. I will continue for the strength uh, in CIMB. So in finishing this uh, strategic audit report, we have found many uh, strengths uh, that CIMB have. So firstly, uh, CIMB is the second largest banking group in Malaysia. So with the total asset of RM608.6 billion ringgit plus with the customer base of 16 million users, CIMB is ranked as the 
second largest banking group in Malaysia. Therefore, other competitors is high, uh, unlikely can be easily threatened by CIMB's position as the top uh, second largest banking group in Malaysia. Secondly, the strength that we found is uh, CIMB is uh, the fifth largest banking group in Asia. So, uh, CIMB is the fifth largest banking group in Asia uh, with its presence widely spread to all 10 countries in Asian region. And CIMB has present in countries such as the China, Hong Kong, uh, UK, US and also Sri Lanka. And then the third one is uh, CIMB has a comprehensive objective and well implemented strategies. So uh, in order to tackle any issues, uh, CIMB have five strategic teams that specify CIMB's uh, goal and objective. So it allows CIMB to focus uh, their energy and resources on important aspects uh, in order to resolve uh, all the issues uh, efficiently. The next strength in CIMB Barhat is high quality management team. So uh, the list board of directors in CIMB and also other management team in CIMB have a high educational and qualification, uh, which we can see in the, their profiles. And they also have various experience in other organization before joining in CIMB. And they are also have perfect attendance in board meeting and also board committee meetings. Uh, this is uh, all these are proven in the annual report of CIMB Berhad. And next, uh, CIMB is embracing diversity in workplace. CIMBs uh, give full commitment in integrating diversity and inclusion into its uh, group strategy and has been recognized internationally as it is the only Asian banking group ranked in Thomson Reuters Diversity and Inclusion in 2018. And besides, uh, CIMB also one of the top 100 most diverse and inclusive organizations in the world. Next, we are moving to the weaknesses in CIMB. So there are several weaknesses that we found. The first one is uh, CIMB has smaller market base uh, compared to its competitor, Maybank. So as we know, Maybank is the leading group or the first uh, banking organization in Malaysia. Uh, in, uh, in current situation, Maybank has over 22 million customers, uh, whereas CIMB only has 16 million customers. So the difference of uh, 6 million customers will uh, affect the reduce in net profitability of uh, CIMB. Therefore, it pushes CIMB to maintain as the second largest banking group in Malaysia instead of rising as the top most uh, leading banking uh, group in banking industry. And the second one is a lower return on equity. Since the outbreak of pandemic COVID-19, uh, CIMB management uh, had no contingency plan or immediate effective strategy. So this situation had uh, led to net profit of CIMB for financial year 2020 to fall drastically more than RM3 million ringgit. So as, the, as there is reduction in their net profit, the dividend uh, per share Paid to the investor also uh, reduced to 4.8%. If compared to previous four years, uh, they have a dividend per share 20 to 26 cents uh, for investor. And the last, uh, the third uh, weaknesses that we can see here is delayed decision making across the organization. So due to large size of uh, its banking group, CIMB face a, a delay in decision making. Uh, decision making across the entire banking group. This is due to the differences in cultural and policies in other countries uh, where they have a subsidiary and also affiliate such as in Hong Kong, in Indonesia and Singapore and etc. So CIMB need to have more time to make decision uh, in order to follow all the rules and regulation in that countries. The fourth weaknesses that we can see in CIMB is uh, vul vulnerable cyber security. So uh, in these days, uh, customers have been claiming that there is potential hacking by third party in CIMB's mobile banking application, uh, CIMB Click, which caused the funds uh, to disappear from their account despite not having any online transaction. So this situation caused the reputation of CIMB's banking app to be less favorable uh, because a uh, confidence of customer is weakened uh, due to the possible vulnerability of CIMB's mobile application to cyber threat attacks. And then uh, the last weaknesses that we can see is inefficient e-wallet application. So the non-interchangeable balance between 
touch and go e-wallet application and it's a physical card is inconvenient because a customer would have to spend more time to reload both platforms even though the e-wallet is an innovative innovative service from the card so this uh, inefficiency uh, might lead the customer to lose interest in CIMB's e-wallet operator and there might uh, there is high possibility that they will switch to another competitors in e-wallet sector that have uh, better services such as GrabPay or uh, Boost. Let's look at, at the trade. So the first trade is economy destruction by COVID-19. The destruction of economy spurred by COVID-19 is inevitable due to its large scale and instability of infections. It caused CIMB revenue to drop by 3.4% in 2020. The prolonged business shutdown and excessive burden on healthcare and medical sectors could plummet the economy even further. Overall, it could only also lead to the downfall of all sectors in the nation, including CIMB in financial sectors. So the second one is changing preferences of the customers because of the large customer base sensitivity to price paired with numerous bank groups in Malaysia's financial sectors, CIMB face high bargaining power of customer and the risk of customer changing their preferences constantly according to the trends. If CIMB is enabled to respond to the customer's demand about certain prices or services, they could option to withdraw from CIMB and seek for other competitors. It could affect uh, the profitability level of CIMB and it is challenging to constantly track the trend of demand by customers in financial sectors so that they could provide the exact product or services demanded by the customer group at the reasonable price. So the third one is intense competition in the industry. The financial sector in Malaysia is teamed with other banking groups with its own unique and differentiated product offerings as well as a non other financial institution. Intense competition in the industry is inevitable as the bank players try to implement various strategies to gain more product market share in the banking industry. Next is the cost of closing one account in CIMB is relatively very low. If a customer closes an account within 3 months of its opening, they will be charged RM20. Meanwhile, RM10 will be charged if the account is closed after 3 months. This so that the customer could list CIMB an option for other uh, financial service provider providers with very minimal loss. If, the, if a large volume of customers did so, CMB could lose a big capital from its depositors. So the, the fifth one is loss of interest from foreign investors. The political turmoil in Malaysia involving the ruling party and other part political parties sparked a concern among the investors over the political stability in the country, as they are worried about potential policies changes in the future due to the outrage of the people toward the sudden change of government and the competency of several ministers, the investors are likely to withdraw their investment from the country and seek for other safer alternatives in neighboring regions. CIMB could also lose potential investor from investing in its facilities which will affect its capital supplies and ability to keep more cash reserves that could be used for finding more economic activities in the future. So the sixth one is competition from digital banks. The issuance of digital banks license could spark a higher level of competition in the banking sectors and put more challenge to CIMB. The competition between CIMB and the traditional commercial bank is already intense to differentiate each other. Thus, the rise of new digital banks with more accessible functions in, in, in an era where more customers are proficient in digital literacy could steal CIMB's customer away from traditional banks and shift to digital banks of competitors that are easier to use. Next, the extension of moratorium periods reduce profitability even further. The deferment of loan repayment which is automatically implemented by the government because of MCO policy has already hurt CIMB's financial statement as it would lose the interest revenues from the debtors. But with the moratorium extended from its original 6-month period to more mid-months after that impact the margin of CIMB and other banks even more. The harm of this blanket moratorium is reflected on its cost that accumulates to RM4 $7.4 billion at, as at June 2020, which means the financial institution incurred loss of about RM16 billion per month. So, thank you. We already know about the SWOT analysis. Now we will move on to the TOS analysis. 
Now we will look first into the strengths and opportunity strategy. So the first strategy is combining the first rank which is CIMB as the second largest bank in Malaysia and also the second rank which is the fifth largest bank in Asia, also the fifth opportunity which international strategy alliance in CIMB with establishment of organization. This strategy will also increase international alliance to gain more investor and also gain asset to grow as the largest bank in Malaysia, also in Asia. So the international alliance would elevate the CIMB image and reputations. This actually increased the confidence of other countries' investors about the CIMB potential growth. So this is actually also allow CIMB to attract more customers and investors to deposit their capital investment in CIMB Bank. Now, for the second strategy, is combination of the first rank as the second largest bank in Malaysia and also the ninth rank, which is active corporate social responsibility in CIMB. Now, it's combined with the fifth opportunity, which is international strategic alliance and sixth opportunity, where new potential customer in CIMB. So, this strategy is to increase engagements and donations with the society to actually establish a good reputation of CIMB image which could utilize a portion of its profit to increase the necessary assistance for all the society to build a good relationship with them and give back the commitment to society. As CIMB always partner up with reputable organizations, they also have active in joining community and enhance their activity. So this is actually how much CIMB take care of their external stakeholders. The third strategy is by combining the sixth strength, which is diverse in offering service, and also fourth opportunity, which is a new market for new insurance product, and the sixth opportunity, which is new potential customer in CIMB. This strategy is offering a diverse of service for a new and potential customer, also a new market for new insurance products. CIMB can actually expand their current product and also service by offering in including a new product, such as example, insurance policy, that will covering the cost of mental health for treatments to a people that have a mental health issue that cannot afford the cost. CMB also can create an insurance product that affordable for the people in lower income to give an extra protection. Now we look into the weakness and opportunity strategy. The first strategy is by combining the third weakness which is delayed decision making in CIMB and also the first opportunity which is increased digitalization adoption. This strategy is to integrate the internal communication system in CIMB with a real-time update in CIMB. As we can see, the limitation in communication could also be overcome by having a fully integrated communication system where CIMB can connect entire group in all locations and also provide a real-time updates for all communications. This technique also could speed up the decision-making process in CIMB. This also can reduce any conflict due to misunderstanding. For example, the employee can ask any questions regarding to any issue that happened in CIMB and get a faster answer from the management. The second strategy is by establish a smart banking application with a strong security. This strategy by combining the fourth weakness which is vulnerable to cyber security and also the fifth weakness which is inefficiency of e-wallet by combining the first opportunity which is increased digitalization adoption. This strategy is to establish a smart banking applications with a strengthened security. Now we can see issue that is preventing CMB growth which is the breach of data and also loss of funds due to the third party hacking. So, CIMB should adopting a smart system which is IR 4.0 into their website and also mobile application CIMB Click to boost their own safer security. It also provides a safer and a better banking experience when the customer being prevent from any fraud, scam and also hacking. The third strategy is to increase the quality of international partnership to gain a bigger customer base by combining the first weakness which is smaller market base than my bank and also the fifth opportunity which is international strategic alliance with an established organizations and the sixth opportunity which is a new potential customer in CIMB. The high quality of joint venture can actually boost the CIMB image and performance in public by evaluate the current service and also enhance more value that can fulfill the potential customer CIMB can actually attract more people from foreign country and actually can expand their services. We have identified some analysis to come up with the tools metrics of the strange tweets and the weakness tweet. So first, uh, firstly, in the strange tweets, where we revise uh, the objective of the group to be more prepared for the unexpected situation in the future, as the CIMB performance was badly affected in the pandemic, likely to the due to the unprepared uh, cope with the changes and the impact of the cost. So the management should use their experience and knowledge from this incident to revise the strategy they have now to generate uh, the new objective that should aim and strategies on how they are going to achieve them. 
So after that, the secondly, they have to increase the targeted uh, assistance programmers to avoid the negative effect on the long-term moratorium. The automatic moratorium impact the bank financial harshly for the CIMB top management should come with the alternative program that could give the equal benefit for the both party. So then the weakness uh, of the weakness streets uh, that we can analyze in the tools where we have to provide investment services with higher returns on the equity to attract the interest of the foreign investor. Losing investor will reduce the capital in CIMB which will affect its ability to give loan and do their own investment in the future. CIMB should construct on the investment package that is attractive and highly profitability to the attract interest of the investor and get them to carry out in their businesses in Malaysia. After that, to improve the contingency plan to prevent CIMB profitability from being affected by the unexpected situation. So the COVID-19 pandemic taught the CIMB about the value of the sufficient prepare to the face least expected event. CIMB should retain a uh, ret rethink of the overall strategy to include the measure that could it take for the emergency situation. So the plan should also consider the policy that met launched by the government which might occur uh, hurt company that they should prepare the plan that can cushion the impact to the lowest degree possible. So next I will pass to the next presenter to continue uh, on the recommendation and the conclusion. So based on the findings that have been presented by my group mates in the previous SWOT and test matrix analysis, I will now be presenting about the recommendations that could be used by CIMB in order to improve their strategies. Firstly, in the case of the decreasing net profit due to the COVID-19 pandemic, CIMB can use its capabilities to restructure new strategies. This can be done by providing a flexible targeted assistance programs to the customers. In this type of programs, the customers and the bank can negotiate with each other to uh, reschedule the loan repayments according to the customer's needs and financial capabilities at the time. The customers can choose whether they want to pay a lower sum of uh, repayment for a longer time or if they want to pay a larger sum of repayment for a shorter time. Now, these options are more useful compared to using moratorium and stopping the and deferring the repayment altogether, which is only beneficial to the customers but is harmful to the banks. So by having a targeted assistance program, it will provide a win-win situation to both the customers and the banks. Next, CIMB should also consider to increase their investment in more advanced technology to be applied in their banking system. This can be done by taking advantage of the Industrial Revolution 4.0 or IR 4.0 to integrate smarter banking system in its website and its mobile application. Now, not only having advanced technology would strengthen the cyber security of its uh, technological system, but it will also help to give a better banking experience for the customers as it will help to restore their confidence and trust in CIMB by eliminating the problem of the possible consumer data breach from happening again. Last but not least, in the cases of underperforming CIMB branches in terms of lack of product knowledge and also poor treatments towards the customers, CIMB stock management might want to consider reconstructing a more comprehensive training programs for the employees. The training programs module should be concise and easy to be followed by employees from all organizational levels in order to educate them about the objectives that CIMB group is aiming to achieve and how they are going to achieve it, which is well, what strategies are they going to use. So this will help the uh, employees to always uh, keep in mind about their purpose in the organization and how they are going to fulfill their purpose so that they will always maintain the quality performance to represent the high reputation of CIMB. To conclude, it is inevitable for any organization to face issues in their operation whether it is internal or external, and despite them already having an excellent set of strategic management skills. Especially in these recent years, with the outbreak of coronavirus pandemic that has affected the whole world, more firms have been uh, suffering from underperformance compared to the previous years. Even CIMB as the second largest commercial bank in Malaysia is heavily affected. However, despite the struggles that it is facing internally and externally, uh, CIMB has done a great job in adapting to the new norm brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, added with its strong le excellent list of strengths, as well as its strong management team leading CIMB, there is a high chance for CIMB to bounce back in the economy and uh, a very, an even higher potential for it to make a stronger comeback in, the, uh, in future financial years. And with that, I end the presentation for our group six, the girls, and I want to thank you for listening. Thank you again.